The topic that I've been asked to speak on today is one of the hottest topics in contemporary cosmology. How did the universe begin? And what I want to do in our time together this morning is to show that we have very good grounds for accepting the biblical worldview that the universe was created out of nothing by God at some point in the finite past. And I'll introduce our topic by first saying a word about the historical background of the debate over the origin of the universe. Then I'll share a classic argument for creation and unfold some of the philosophical and scientific support for its premises. And finally, I'll wrap up by reflecting a bit theologically on the significance of this conclusion. As a boy, I used to wonder about the existence of the universe. I wondered about how big it is. I wondered about how it began. I remember lying in bed at night trying to think of a beginningless universe. Every event would be preceded by another event, back and back and back into the past with no stopping point, or rather no starting point, an infinite past with no beginning. My mind just reeled at the prospect. It just seemed inconceivable to me. It seemed to me that there had to be a beginning at some point in the past in order for everything to get started. Well, little did I realize that for centuries, millennia really, men had grappled with the idea of an infinite past and the question of the absolute beginning of the universe. Ancient Greek philosophers like Plato and Aristotle believed that matter was necessary and uncreated and therefore eternal. God may be responsible for introducing order into the cosmos, but he didn't create the universe itself. This Greek view was in contrast to even more ancient Jewish thought about the subject. Hebrew writers held that God created the universe out of nothing at some point in the finite past. As the first verse of the Bible states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, ancient Hebrew, in which the book of Genesis was written, had no word for the universe. When an ancient Hebrew speaker wanted to refer to the universe, he would use the expression, the heavens and the earth. So Genesis 1-1 states in effect, in the beginning, God created the universe. It therefore implies that God created everything that exists without any pre-existing materials. Now, some scholars have tried to deny this fact by translating Genesis 1-1 as a subordinate clause. When God created the universe in the beginning, the earth was without form and void, which might make it sound as if the earth was already there. But most scholars today recognize this to be a mistranslation of the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, there is a conjunction and between verses one and two. And when you have a grammatical construction like this, what you have is two main clauses with the first one providing background information for the second. So verse one states, in the beginning, God created the universe. And then in verse two, the focus radically narrows and the earth was without form and void. So, in contrast to the Greek view, the Hebrew worldview was that matter and energy are not eternal, but were created at some time in the finite past by God. This was also the worldview of New Testament Christians. The Gospel of John opens with words that are very reminiscent of Genesis 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made. 
John 1, verses 1 and 3. Eventually, these two competing traditions began to interact. There arose a debate in Western philosophy that lasted for well over a thousand years on whether or not the universe had a beginning. Although the debate began between Greek pagans and Christians, it eventually pulled in Jews and Muslims, as well as Christians, both Catholic and Protestant. It finally sputtered to something of an inconclusive end in the thought of the great German philosopher Immanuel Kant in the 18th century. Kant held, ironically, that there are rationally compelling arguments for both sides so that the problem is insoluble and exposes the bankruptcy of reason itself. What were some of the arguments for the beginning of the universe? Well, let's let one of the greatest medieval champions of the doctrine of creation speak for himself. Al-Ghazali was a 12th century Muslim theologian from Persia, or modern-day Iran. And he was concerned that Muslim philosophers of his day were being influenced by Greek philosophy to deny the beginning of the universe. They held that the universe flows necessarily out of God and is therefore beginningless. After thoroughly studying the teachings of these philosophers, Al-Ghazali wrote a devastating critique of their views called the incoherence of the philosophers. And in this fascinating book, he argues that it is impossible that the universe be beginningless. The universe must have a beginning, he argues, and since nothing begins to exist without a cause, there must therefore be a transcendent creator of the universe. Ghazali frames his argument very simply. Let me quote him. He says, every being which begins has a cause for its beginning. Now the world is a being which begins. Therefore, it possesses a cause for its beginning. And we can summarize Ghazali's reasoning in three simple steps. One, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. This argument is so marvelously simple that it's easy to memorize and share with another person. Moreover, this is a logically airtight argument. If the two premises are true, then the conclusion follows necessarily. So I'd like to look at this argument with you this morning more closely, starting with the second premise that the universe began to exist. During the Middle Ages, before the rise of modern science, people had no scientific evidence for the beginning of the universe. But Ghazali presented some ingenious philosophical arguments for why the past has to be finite. For example, Ghazali points out that if the universe never began to exist, then the number of past events in the history of the universe is infinite. Think about it. If the universe never began to exist, then the number of past events is infinite. But, Al-Ghazali argued, this is impossible because an actually infinite number of things cannot exist. The way in which Ghazali shows the impossibility of an actually infinite number of things is by imagining what it would be like if such a collection could exist and then drawing out the absurd consequences from it. Let me share with you one of my favorite illustrations called Hilbert's Hotel, which is the brainchild of the great German mathematician David Hilbert. Now, as a warm-up, Hilbert first invites us to imagine an ordinary hotel with a finite number of rooms. And let's suppose that all the rooms are full. If a new guest shows up at the front desk asking for a room, the manager apologizes, sorry, all the rooms are full, and the guest has to be turned away. 
But now, Hilbert said, let's imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms. And let's suppose, once again, that all the rooms are full. Now, this fact has to be clearly appreciated. There is not a single vacancy throughout the entire infinite hotel. Every room already has a guest in it. 